Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Kings podcast here on iHeartRadio. I am your host, me, Gene Sports Machine, and we are going to have a great show for you later on in the show. I'm excited. We are going to be joined by the 2015 Pro Bowler and NFL Top 100 Players of 2016. He tied Hall of Famer's Ozzie Newsom's uh, franchise record set in 1979 for tight ends with nine touchdowns. Gary Barnage is going to join us. Gary played for the Carolina Panthers and the Cleveland Browns. He's going to stop by. We're going to talk about a couple of things, uh, mainly uh, the tight end position and how it has changed to where it, you know, seemed like uh, some tight ends play more wide receiver like uh, uh, style of play versus tight end. But, we, you know, Gary will break that down for us and, and let us know what his thoughts is on that. Also, we will talk about the touchdown pass that actually tied uh, Ozzy Newsom's record. Um, and I believe that was a touchdown uh, from Johnny Menzel. Um, I mean, one of the many uh, quarterbacks that he played for uh, while he was a member of the Cleveland Browns. So, And then we will also uh, ask him about his uh, very, very close friendship with uh, D'Angelo Williams. Uh, and that former Pittsburgh uh, Steelers, D'Angelo Williams, former Carolina Panthers, D'Angelo Williams. They both played for the Panthers uh, a while back, and, um, and and we'll talk about that. So anyway, uh, just kind of set back, and uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are going to bring Gary Barnage on and, uh, and have a conversation. Once again, you listen to the Sports Kings podcast here on iHeartRadio. And we are back, folks. Once again, it's the Sports Kings podcast here on iHeartRadio with your host, Mean Gene Sports Machine. And as promised, folks, we have a special guest here on the line joining us. And I am very honored to have him here. Uh, this guy was a uh, NFL Top 100 player of 2016. He was a member of the Carolina Panthers and the Cleveland Browns. He was a Pro Bowler 2015. Uh, he had 79 receptions, 1,043 receiving yards, nine touchdowns, by the way, which tied Hall of Famer Ozzie Newsom's franchise record set in 1979 by a tight end. And, folks, I am talking about the one and only Gary Barnage. Gary, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Appreciate you having me on. Hey, it's an honor to, to have you, man. I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, just wanted to sit and chat with you, just kind of see what you've been doing since you – been out of football for a couple of years. Just what 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 are you currently working on these days? I have my nonprofit, American Football Top Bears. Been going with that for the last eight years. Doing that when I was playing, we go overseas, do free football camps for kids, visit schools, orphanages, hospitals, spend time with kids there, and then we bring 10, 15 NFL players with us to uh, go to these different countries and just spread the sport we love to play and give kids the opportunities they might not ever get it uh, themselves. So we want to help build that and help and give them all the opportunities. That's great stuff, man. And people don't even realize. And I know a lot of fans, you know, are just so caught up in what you guys do on the field. Half of the people that really like football don't even know what you guys do when you, I mean, not only are you spending time practicing, trying to make your craft good, but the things that you do from the bottom of your heart, man, that just goes a long way, Gary. Well, and that's the thing, that's the reason why we started it, because we wanted to do something to use what we have to influence others. And we want to give these kids in these other countries an opportunity to possibly maybe one day get a scholarship to play college football somewhere and live their dream of playing in the NFL. Or if you're not that, just learning the greatness that the sport is of football, giving everybody the opportunity to play it and play it the right way, the correct way, which is what it's all about. So are you are you getting close to any success stories? Are we going to see anyone from from your organization get get into the uh, to the pros? So we've actually had some guys get uh, offered uh, scholarships for college. They turned them down because they ended up going to Stanford for schooling. So we brought two kids over from China, and one was offered a D two scholarship, and he turned it down because he wanted to go to Stanford for schooling instead. Which can't blame him. Mm -hmm. He wants to go to Stanford for schooling. He's got to do it. Then we also had a kid from Egypt, the tight end, that was given a preferred walk-on out of college. And I don't know if he, I don't think he actually took it because obviously the cost for the travel all the way from Egypt and they're having to pay for college. 
but just the fact that he had the opportunity to get a preferred walk on, he would never have got that if we didn't go over there. Or the kid would have never got a D2 scholarship if we would have never went and brought our camp there and then brought these kids over to do a football camp here in the U.S. That's great stuff, man. That is awesome stuff, folks. Once again, we are talking to the former pro bowler and, and tight end from the Cleveland Browns, Gary Barnage, here on the Sports Kings podcast. So let's 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 talk a little bit about football now. I mean, do 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 you miss the game of? I mean, do you miss lining up on Sundays and and getting out there and catching those passes? Oh, I definitely miss game days. I miss the game days and I miss the locker room with the guys and stuff like that. I don't miss the politics that goes into football and all that kind of stuff. So I don't miss any of that. But I do miss the actual playing of the game and stuff like that. That's the part that you can't you can't relive. And it's just it's something you can't create somewhere else. So it's just the part that's always going to be missed, but still enjoy the game and still enjoy teaching to these kids. So that's my way of bridging out and doing more with the sport. Hey, Gary, can I talk to you about the tight end position? Because, I mean, you know, when you played – uh, with the Panthers and the Browns, I mean, I, I, I mean, you, you, you. In my opinion, now this is just my opinion. Were a true tight end um, that played that position. But when I look at some of the other tight ends, and and, and specifically uh, like Jimmy Jimmy Graham a few years ago when he played with the Saints, and maybe uh, George Kittle, and even even Vernon. Um, oh my Lord! I done set up here and forgot his name. Vernon Davis. Uh, I mean, these guys are somewhat uh, were like borderline wide receivers. I mean, so is the tight end position is it is it being used more as a wide out in your opinion? Well, I think nowadays uh, it's all about getting the matchups with linebackers because they might not be able to cover the uh, the tight ends or a smaller safety to cover the big tight end. So they have moved more to a receiving type of tight end, and then they'll have a second tight end that's more of their blocking tight end. Okay. And I, I don't, they don't really, nowadays, they don't have as many that do both. They, they can do both, but they're not great at both. And I think that's been lost throughout the time. It's been transforming into just more receiving because, as NFL as you've seen, it's more about putting up points and all sense and the exciting aspect versus just grinding and running the ball and stuff like that. It's gone away from that. It's more of an exciting aspect to throw the ball around. So you're seeing less and less of the dual threat tight ends that can pass block, run block, and catch passes. So, like, that whole aspect is being lost upon nowadays, guys. Because those bring somebody else, their job is just to block, and the other guys, their job is to run out. Okay, I got you. I got you. So, hey, I, I, I want to talk about your time with the, with the, uh, with the Cleveland Browns and – and certainly uh, uh, your Pro Bowl year. I mean, uh, incredible numbers that you put up. Now, wait a minute. On a personal note, Gary, I, I want to thank you for helping me win my fantasy football league that year because, man, I picked you up late and you took me to the promised land. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it and you're welcome. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about that year. That, and, I mean, because – you played for a number of quarterbacks that year. I mean, you caught passes. I mean, those, th that year, I mean, th those 1,043 yards, how many quarterbacks did they come from? I think three or four different quarterbacks because of injuries and stuff like that. So walk, walk me through the, 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 uh, the uh, tying touchdown where, where you tied uh, Ozzie Newsom's. I, I think that was a pass from Johnny Manziel. Can, can you just walk me through that? Yeah, it, it was just, it was, I, well, obviously, everybody was talking about he could tie and all that kind of stuff, but I've never been one that's into the stats. I've always been just focused on getting wins because I wanted to win. That's what it was about for me was winning. So even when I scored the touchdown, there was going, you, you tied it. It wasn't, it's a big deal, but in the scheme of things, I wasn't worried about it because I wanted to win, and that's what it was all about. And it was the same thing. Whenever we had, I think, still a game or two left and I had an opportunity to break it, they were like, oh, we can try and get you the ball. And I'm like, I rather, I don't care about breaking the record. Mm -hmm. I'd rather win. I'd rather give up that record and get right. a victory versus force a ball to me and then we don't win. I'd rather have that. I'd rather have the win. So it's a great thing that to be mentioned with this, with Ozzy and all that. But if it's, if it's if it doesn't come in a win, it doesn't matter as much to me. That's great stuff, Gary. That that's that's good stuff to hear. So now, when when I look at that play, and I've watched it over a thousand times, 
Um, I mean, what, I mean, was that a designed play? Because it kind of looked like it wasn't going to happen there. I mean, was it was it a play by design? Was that intended for you to, to catch that pass? Uh, well, the thing is, some things are designed and some things aren't. So you just you you design a certain route or whatever, and then you run, and something might break down, and just able to make plays, and that's all. That's all you have to do. And but I'm pretty sure it was a design play. That's what we were gonna do, mm-hmm. and then that's the way, and it just ended up working out. Yeah, that was great, man. Great stuff there. So. And and I'll, I just want to kind of talk to you about uh, the. I mean, have you are you watching any football now? Have you been able to just kind of keep up with the Browns and what's been going on with that with the organization? In all honesty, I don't actually watch that much football anymore. I watch more college than I watch pro nowadays. I still have it on every occasion, but I'm not really paying as much attention to it. Okay, okay, and I hear that from a lot of players once once they leave the game. I do want to ask you about. The friendship that you have with one of your former teammates, D'Angelo Williams. And I know you guys played together in in, in uh, Carolina, but uh, to see you guys continue on with this friendship, I mean, how, how did this come about? Yeah, so D'Angelo, I've known him since my, actually we met when I was in college and he was in college. We played against each other my freshman year of college, which I believe was his junior year. And uh, we played against each other. And I actually scored my first college touchdown against Memphis on a Thursday night when they we beat them at Memphis. And I don't want to live that down. So that's the only time I played against Memphis and was against him. So I'm 1-0 against him in college. But uh, then I went to Carolina, and he was there. And then he had a love for wrestling. And he had went to <laughs> WrestleMania. And he told me about it. And I'm like, and I didn't get an invite? And then from then on, we just we clicked because we talked about wrestling all the time, and then all the home games we stayed at hotels. So he he rode with me from the hotel to the game every game day for the next four years I was there. So we just grew our relationship, and I've watched his kids, him having no kids, but having three kids, watching the kids grow up. So it's just been a great friendship, and he can be tough, tough to deal with sometimes that people <laughs> like to feel the hell about Twitter because he is very opinionated but I know how to block him out and we never actually really argue we never fight nothing like that That's, and uh, just have a great relationship and he's a great person and great friend Dad. it's incredible man I've seen some of the videos folks and I tell you I mean what what Gary's talking about I mean you can probably YouTube uh, uh, you know some of the the videos out there with Gary and 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 D'Angelo Williams, and and it's just incredible stuff. But you brought up that W word. I wasn't gonna say it. I'm glad you did. You brought up this wrestling stuff. Now I stumbled upon some videos, and I don't even know if it was meant for me to see Gary, but I saw what you did. I saw you pick up a professional wrestler and body slam him. Yeah, that was uh, it was a little something we did. D'Angelo ended up having a wrestling match out of it, <laughs> and uh, it was just some fun stuff. Me and him were really into wrestling. We enjoyed going to all the different wrestlings, and I actually have a wrestling ring at my house. To me, I'm a mess around the wrestling ring, and oh it's just goodness. fun. It's fun. Like we enjoy watching. I would never really get into wrestling because I've already put my body through a lot of <laughs> pain and work that I really wouldn't want to put more pain onto it. So. What? I would just enjoy watching it, and it's just a lot of fun. It's an entertaining sport to watch, and it's just it's good good fun. Well, you answered my last question, man, because after watching these videos, I, I'm like, you know what? I got to ask because I had already had this vision of you and D'Angelo Williams being the first former NFL players to become tag team champions in the WWE. Now, now we've entertained the idea of possibly doing it but we both said hey it's not really for us <laughs> we don't want to put our body through more stuff it's just because it's a lot of stuff you have to go through you have to do a lot more training you have to learn all the proper ways of doing everything and it's a whole nother grind and we already did that our whole life in football if you just start a whole new career and a, and a sport that isn't really kind on your body and you're doing it later in life versus earlier in life you're right i, I hear you man and i, I appreciate you for breaking that down for me. But, hey, you know what? I'm going to respect your time because I know you're a busy man, and, and I really do appreciate you joining us here. Um, and I hope that we can get you back on sometime in the future, man. Yeah, no problem. And also, like you said, with my friendship with D'Angelo, we actually have our own podcast now, too, the Cinnamon Sugar Podcast. 
Okay, wait a minute. So let let the listeners know where where can they find that? What's the name of that again? It's called the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast. Okay, a little awesome. play on a little play on words of our skin color, obviously, but then. <laughs> Cinnamon is tough to deal with. You can't do the cinnamon challenge. <laughs> Sugar is super easy to deal with, and to me, so it's a little play on two different aspects with us, and we just have fun with it. We talk about whatever we want, and has a good time. And uh, it's on Google Play, it's on iTunes, it's also on Spotify. So it's hey. fun. We have done a couple episodes so far. We're still working on it every week. So that's Go awesome. Good. That is awesome. And hey, and I also want to compliment you too, man. The, the interviews you did with uh, some of the kid reporters, man, that was some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Um, it was just funny. And how you handled those kids, that was marvelous. Uh, I love kids. I don't have any myself. Not ready. But I love, have, I love kids. I love playing with Angela's kids. My little nieces. Well, I'm little anymore, but I still call my little nieces. Uh, and I'm just dealing with kids. I enjoy kids. My brother's kids. It's all good. It's fun. Hey, folks. Hey, Gary, man. Thanks a lot. And we look forward to having you back on, man. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Take it easy. Folks, once again, Gary Barnage joining us on the Sports Kings podcast here on iHeartRadio. The guy is is just phenomenal. He is a class act. Uh, you really have to see. I knew I was not far off the earth. When I said that these guys were going to be in the WWE and he just admitted that they gave it some thought. But you have to go and look at the videos because they are hilarious. This guy is very, very um, entertaining and just a great guy. I mean, can you tell? I mean, can you just hear the genuineness um, uh, in his voice? So, hey, he walked away from the game. I believe he had... uh, um, an injury that, that had him walk away from the game. I mean, Gary's only, what, 34, maybe 35, 34, I believe. But uh, just a great guy. And uh, he's not the first person that I've interviewed that said when they left the game, they don't watch as much football on Sundays. I guess they're just trying to get some of that time back, some of that free time that they that they, uh, that they didn't have, that they've given up for, like, years. We're talking, you know, from college, traveling, and to the NFL. But anyway... Hope you enjoyed that interview, and uh, we are going to wrap up the show. That was one of the Sports Kings podcast specials, um, and you don't forget, you can uh, listen to this podcast as often as you want, many times as you want. Um, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Google Play. You can get it on uh, uh, iHeartRadio, of course, uh, and Podbean.com. And, uh, oh, so... Uh, an interesting, interesting, interesting podcast that uh, Gary Barnage does with D'Angelo Williams. So, all right, folks. So we'll see you this weekend for the Sports Kings NFL Weekly Countdown podcast as week 15 of the NFL is upon us. And we will count down uh, every game and make our picks. And, of course, go over uh, the picks from last week as we get near and near to the end of the season and the playoffs, which will be coming up here in a couple of weeks. Folks, I am Mean Gene, the Sports Machine, and I will see you later.